My name is uh, Wayne Jacobs, and uh, uh, I've been a member of military families for about five or six years now. Um, I have you uh, served multiple uh, deployments in both Afghanistan and Iraq. Unfortunately, he's home and able to talk for himself. But um, my family's been in the military for a long time, and uh, my great, 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 great great-grandfather died of wounds that he suffered while on patrol within walking distance of here during the King Philip's War. And that was the bloodiest war in our history. Um, and uh, it, it, it gives you an idea of how we get into these wars. Uh, King Philip was the son of Massasoit, who uh, was our um, welcomer here and our closest ally. And uh, yet we fought this you know, incredibly bloody war with his son in the late 1670s, and uh, as a result, 20% of the settlers and 80% of the natives uh, were killed, or in the case of the natives, uh, sold into slavery um, to pay for the cost of the war. And it's, uh, it's not even covered in American history books. So what I'm going to talk about um, is a little bit about how we got into the war in Iraq, how we got into Afghanistan, and how we can use those lessons to prevent us getting involved in another war in Iran that they're already preparing us for. Um, and all three of those situations are basically blowback from uh, CIA operations in the Cold War era that went terribly wrong. Um, in Iraq, the CIA was uh, concerned about uh, pro-Soviets coming to power, and they prepared a list of about 800 citizens of, of Iraq um, who they had uh, doubts about and uh, that we wanted eliminated. And uh, uh, Saddam Hussein was a bit player who came back to, from abroad, picked up the list, and started killing these people. And uh, that's how he became first vice president uh, of Iraq and eventually uh, pulled a coup and uh, was elected as uh, president. Uh, and uh, he was a close ally of the United States. Uh, we provided him with arms and uh, uh, in the uh, um, war against Iran, one of the wars against Iran, the one from 1983 to 1989, the United States and its allies, Britain, France, Israel, South Africa, provided about $65 billion worth of arms to Saddam Hussein in various ways. And we financed them in very funky ways as well. Um, some of the weapons uh, were financed through the Agriculture Department's uh, Commodity Co uh, Credit Corporation, which was set up to help American farmers export their goods abroad but was uh, totally subjugated uh, illegally to provide uh, $5 billion worth of funding for Saddam Hussein to buy arms. And uh, I was one of the people that organized against the first Iraq war. Uh, Saddam Hussein asked the United States, as a client here, um, whether we would be concerned uh, if he invaded Kuwait. And uh, the United States Ambassador April Glasby, after checking with State Department for instructions, said basically we would view this as a neighborhood squabble and it was of no interest to us. Uh, and in the, the six months or so that uh, followed the invasion, and there was an incredible amount of propaganda and hype. One incident in particular um, that everybody in America saw was an incident where Iraqi troops were supposed to have gone through the nursery of a hospital and snatched babies out of their cribs and left them there. But it never happened. Uh, it was totally fabricated. Uh, somebody associated with the embassy was the little girl that uh, was on television talking about this happened. I, I actually have uh, a sister-in-law whose brother-in-law is reading. And uh, we were getting, you know, reports regularly about what was going on in Kuwait. And in this particular neighborhood, there was one Rolls Royce that had four flat tires. That was the extent of the damage from the invasion of Iraq uh, into Kuwait. But uh, for uh, whatever reasons, we decided to um, to go to war um, against Saddam Hussein and assembled a big international coalition to do so. And the American people didn't want to go. We did polls that showed that uh, two-thirds of the American public would rather negotiate with Saddam Hussein instead of going to war with him. Um, and uh, that it were um, 
that uh, Congress would have to approve. And uh, that forced uh, the Bush administration, which had said they would neither negotiate nor go to Congress, to do both. And uh, we actually came within three votes in the United States Senate of stopping that war. Um, and uh, you know how the war turned out, but uh, after the soldiers came back from uh, Iraq as heroes, uh, we found that uh, almost immediately um, they were jobless and homeless and uh, I was running an investigative news service and we called veterans associations and homeless shelters uh, around the country until we found the most compelling cases of veterans who were homeless. There was one guy here in Boston, a uh, African-American, I forget his name now, but uh, he had served both in Vietnam and Iraq. He was wearing the hat that he had taken off a dead Iraqi soldier. He had a bank account in a local bank that gave him an ATM card. He was using the ATM card and sleeping in the little ATM booth here in Boston in the middle of the winter. Um, and uh, that story um, was on ABC um, Primetime Live and resulted in legislation being forced uh, to um, you know, take care of homeless veterans uh, coming back from the war was the first attention that was paid to that. And then um, the 9-11 uh, happened, and from the you know, first day, um, the neocons who had wanted to go to war against Saddam Hussein, in fact, the, the first meeting of the Bush National Security Council, um, there were two things that were on the agenda. One was supporting the right-wing uh, government in Israel, and the, the second was not if, but when we should go to war against Iraq. And uh, from the first day, they tried to make up this story about uh, how Saddam Hussein was behind uh, the 9-11 uh, uh, attacks, which was completely untrue. And then... It's very funky. <laughs> oh, I see. And, uh, but, uh, and then the story became, well, we're going to uh, prevent... Uh, uh, Saddam from building weapons of mass destruction. Well, I, I happen to have consulted with um, the UN inspection, inspection teams that went to Iraq, and uh, um, we knew what they had, and a lot of those uh, weapons of mass destruction, the United States helped uh, them to develop. Uh, we used uh, our Cray computers, our top computers, to help uh, Saddam to uh, um, test the booster rockets on the Scud missiles that allowed them to uh, reach um, Israel and Saudi Arabia, ironically. And uh, we provided them with all kinds of equipment. The inspectors uh, told me that uh, when they would get to the, some of these alleged sites, they, they would be littered with American computers, American equipment of all types. And uh, those com uh, companies were never held accountable. And uh, so um, we trumped up these excuses to go to war. And uh, Rumsfeld and Cheney insisted this would just be a little thing. We'd be out of there. There was no planning. And uh, we got into this mess that has dragged on now for years and years at a tremendous cost to the Iraqi people, a tremendous cost to our soldiers and sa uh, sailors and uh, Marines, and uh, has left the country pretty much um, destroyed, and our own country destroyed, because it's cost us, you know, ultimately will cost us several trillion dollars uh, for that uh, situation. Uh, the situation in Afghanistan is, is you know, somewhat similar. Um, you know, the CIA saw an opportunity to uh, score one against the Soviet Union when they invaded Afghanistan, and we provided uh, equipment and training to um, whoever was opposing uh, the Soviets, which included the Mujahideen and uh, uh, Osama bin Laden and uh, their associates and everyone else. And, uh, um, you know, in part, this is, you know, in Afghanistan also blowback um, from a, a CIA operation um, gone wrong. And, uh, you know, the story in Iran is very similar. Um, you know, the CIA in particular, the grandson of, uh, of uh, President Roosevelt, um, was involved in, uh, you know, this uh, little coup where they replaced the democratically elected government with Iran, with the Shah of Iran, 
and uh, we supported him in every way that we could. He was our closest ally in the region in many ways, except for Israel, and uh, we gave him every kind of military equipment, including under Richard Nixon, the blank trek to buy destroyers. And uh, you know, less well known is that uh, some of the money that was uh, part of the Camp David Accord, um, you know, was slipped. Some of the weapons were slipped uh, surreptitiously uh, through Egypt and other ports to Iran as well. So. We were very complicit in allowing the Shah and the secret police to repress the Iranian people. And uh, you know, the consequence was that the Shah was overthrown. And uh, we were confronted with the uh, Islamic Revolution that's you know, uh, hostile to the United States. Um, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's a wonderful old country that's been around for 5,000 years and for centuries led the world in literature and poetry and uh, art and uh, has a vibrant middle class and um, was very Western oriented as was uh, Iraq. And uh, I went to fraternity brothers in college from Iran. And uh, now it's being demonized as is always the case when we want to go to war with somebody is that uh, we demonize them and uh, they are developing nuclear weapons. I have no doubt about that. Um, but uh, other enemies uh, or uh, adversaries or uh, rivals of the United States have developed nuclear weapons. Uh, China, Russia, enormous uh, arsenals in the case of Russia. Um, you know, India and Pakistan both have nuclear weapons. It would be a much better world if we got rid of all of our nuclear weapons. But, you know, we're in a very poor position because we have 5,000 nuclear weapons ourselves now, down from, you know, 20,000. Um, but uh, we're about to spend $85 billion um, in building a whole new generation of bomb factories that will be capable of building 400 new n nuclear warheads a year. And, uh, you know, how uh, effective are we going to be in preaching temperance from the bar stool when we talk about Iran um, nuclear weapons? And I know from having organized against both Iraq wars that... Uh, you know, in the, in the, at the beginning, you're in a distinct minority. Your child, your patriotism is challenged, and uh, um, it's hard to get resources, and it's hard to organize and uh, to uh, build a consensus against this war. But so, when we're still involved in Iraq and we're still involved in Afghanistan, we need to start now to challenge um, this, you know, march to war in Iran, and uh, and point out these lessons that we should have learned by now and uh, to prevent more soldiers and more Marines um, and more innocent civilians from being killed.